Well, originally when we started this work, uh, it, was, it was rather theoretical that the trees would be successful in remediating petroleum hydrocarbon contamination at depth. What we've been able to do is take something that was largely theoretical 15 years ago, apply it and show that it has potential to successfully remediate contaminated sites in settings just like this. I'm Trevor Carlson and I'm the Director of Environmental Affairs for Federated Co-op. We're taking core samples today. We're using a direct push drilling rig that allows us to collect relatively undisturbed soil cores uh, from surface down to about six meters of depth. And what we're looking for are two main things. We're looking to see if there's root penetration into the areas that were historically contaminated, to see if the trees uh, have shot roots to where we want them to. And we've looked to see if the contaminants are present at either the same concentrations as originally or uh, at much lower concentrations. We've seen a, a pretty good progression here. In the first five years, five or six years that we were in, we saw, I, I believe it was somewhere around a, a 45 to 55 percent decrease in the hydrocarbon concentration from the chemistry that we were looking at. So this was an opportunity to look at a site that had subsurface contamination and see could you put in trees, get the roots down far enough to affect the microbial communities and, uh, and enhance the breakdown of the hydrocarbons. My name is Rich Farrell. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Soil Science at the University of Saskatchewan. The advantage of the trees in a situation like this as well is that they use a lot of water. Any sort of contamination that's in, associated with the water doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't move with the water. It, it, it stays on site. So you're sort of uh, containing it as well as and breaking it down. So what we've seen so far is the, the top three meters or so is much cleaner than it was when this project started. We still have roots in the impact area, which is nice. So if you look there, we've got root fibers right in the staining, which is where we want them. So the trees are doing their job. They are getting their roots down. They're getting down deep enough into the contamination. And I, I think that the, uh, the sort of progression of the breakdown of the hydrocarbons is continuing and has continued throughout this whole process. Historically, a site like this would be excavated and hauled to a landfill. And uh, the soil literally would be just relocated from one place to another site, the contamination largely remaining intact and just being placed somewhere else. We're not satisfied that simply relocating contamination is a responsible way to deal with contamination. And if we can plant trees and improve the communities by doing so and clean the site up at the same time, it's kind of a win-win situation. Most of the communities like sites like this because they're nice and green. And they, they look good. They, it's not a big excavated hole. We're able to build some relationships with some university researchers. We've been able to see some grad students uh, advance their personal careers. We've been able to work with wonderful consultants, regulators in the community, and at the end of the day, I think what we've learned here is that uh, if you get the right team together, you can remediate contaminated sites and you can do it in a better way.